This, this can mean a lot of things, right? Yeah. Like if you're not being tested and you're you're living life every day, the same thing, same thing, you're never going to grow as a person. No pressure. You yeah. know, no pressure, you know what I mean? And, um, it's once those challenges come where you really start to think and really have to start to reevaluate whatever situation you're in or reevaluate yeah. your life in general yeah. um, is, when, is when you can really start to grow as a person and really find out more about yourself. What's going on everybody? It's your boy ABI. We got the king, the main character, uh, Jared. Thank you, Abby. Appreciate it. Yeah, my name's Jared. Um, I played professional soccer in Europe, um, but I'm now a regular degular here in Toronto. Nah, he's not. <laughs> nah, he's not. <laughs> it's funny because, bro, this is my first time doing introduction. I don't do, like, everybody who come, we just talk straight up. Mm -hmm. And then the, every time we talk, after like 30 minutes, they're like, yo, uh, do we start yet? I'm like, <laughs> we've been talking because I'm I'm trying to make it as just conversation. Like I'm not yeah, trying it to has do to be like natural. you know like yeah. I'm trying to like just just talk, bro. Like literally talk. The the more natural sound, the better, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't want to to be like an AI script mm -hmm. and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Bro, I known you for like what a couple of years. Um, oh, quite a few years now. Like at least like five or six. Yeah, since, that's crazy. Since uh, North Miss 2018. Yeah. Time just flies, That was a bro. five. And you know, till this day, that's the best North Miss squad. That was the best. It's the best North Miss squad that they've ever had. I think it's their only playoff appearance, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. We play one game, and then went to the next one, and then we lost. Yeah, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. I think it's Alliance? Alliance. 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 Yeah. Alliance. Two, zero, two zero, I believe. Yeah, yeah that, two was, zero. that was a tough game. Yeah, the coach was good. Alex Balta, good coach. Demanded a lot from us. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know, I have a lot of respect for him as well. Still work with him to this, till this day. So. Goat, man. Yeah. Uh, he came when we did a, a tryout first time because Sam was fired, I, I believe, and then Alex came. Mm -hmm. We did a tryout, and then these guys were just fucking around. You know how do everybody know, like, your boy just fucking yeah, around. Yeah, just He's like, yo, go. You leave. You're not coming back. I'm like, yeah. whoa. Yeah, he's serious. That's what I was like, yo. I can't make any moves, and then yeah, yeah. that's, yeah, like, that, that's another reason why I have so much respect for him because yeah, he, he didn't take when, shit. From he anybody. doesn't take shit from nobody. You know what I mean? And when he points out something that something's wrong, yeah, you know, he's gonna let you know right away. You know yeah. what I mean? And those are the type of coaches that I have a lot of respect for because it's not easy to do that. Yeah. It's not easy to make yourself vulnerable, and it's also not easy to to put yourself in a situation where where people can look at you differently. Yeah. You know? True. So, especially in this generation, it's getting softer. It's getting softer. And like you softer. can't tell. Like you're not allowed to tell them, "Oh, this is a mistake. This is you can't do this. You can't." You're not allowed to say that because mm -hmm. they're gonna catch feelings. They're gonna go online. My coach is harassing me. Blah 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 blah. And they get like, bro. I tell my brother, bro, you wanna be in the one percent? You gotta work ten times harder than. And that's them. another thing. I want to talk about the one percent, man. Yeah. Like for me, like I played. Yeah, I played second division in Europe. Uh, you know what I mean? And. That, that itself is so hard because you get there and especially without a European passport and, yeah. you know, without those, without, you know, family down there and whatnot to help you out. It's so difficult. You're, yeah. you're just a number down there. Just a number. You're just a number. And you, you think you're good now. Oh, in North America. Oh, I'm pretty good. I'm here and there. Yeah. But when you get there, you're like, what? This guy's, this guy's pinging left, right foot. You know what I mean? And these guys are just different. And they just, just different. because and, they want to be there too, right? Exactly. Or and they, they from or, there. They or for be. example, they were there, and then yeah. they they had to go down because some whatever happened happened uh, at, at the higher level. So they they have the experience playing at a higher level. Yeah. And then and then they come down to the level that you're at, second division or whatever. Yeah. And you're trying to take food off their plate. You know, it's just different. You just you find out. Okay, I have to work. I have to work even that much harder. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is a lot harder than Canada. This is different from Canada. Different lifestyle to get used to. And yeah. You know what I mean? And if you're looking, if you're looking to, to be abroad, make sure that, that you have your head, your head on your shoulders. You're ready. Yeah, you're ready because you're going to be in uncomfortable positions. And I like, I like to say to people, like, become comfortable being uncomfortable. You know, and mm -hmm. that, that goes to say in all aspects of life. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, it, it, whether it's a job, whether it's uh, with family, and whether it's, you know, finding, for, for example, even finding a new girl or, yeah. or you know, finding someone at the finding Finding a new like, girl. Yeah, like you, that. you never know. Like, yeah. you, you have to put yourself in a position to, to risk. To risk, you know yeah. what I mean? And that risk can come with a reward or it can come with, it can come with anything. Learning. You know? Learning, exactly. That's deep, bro. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was going to come today. On, on, on a Saturday night, that's crazy, man. Comfortable and comfortable is very important because you go in this place, and nobody knows you. You don't speak the language. You're there. You don't even know anybody there. They gonna, they probably gonna talk shit about you. You don't even know. You gotta prove that you can play. Probably gonna be on the bench, right? Like that's why 90 whatever percent they don't make it. They go to Europe and they just like oh shit, homesick. 
don't know the language. Mm -hmm. You're most likely safer to be in England because they speak English. Mm -hmm. To be there, to be comfortable. But imagine in Italy, you're in freaking France, you don't even understand anything. Yeah. It's just like, yo, if you're not a baller, forget it. We're done. It's done. Because you got to ball out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because if you can't ball, it's just like, yo. Yeah, and then keep in mind, like, the English market is the hardest market in the it world. It is tough. You everybody's know, there. Everybody's there. There's, you know, yes, people speak English and you know, you'll, be a, you'll be acclimatized to the environment a little bit mm. better, but you're just, you're even more of just a small number there. Yeah. There's some people there in England that could easily play first division here in Canada or USA, but they're in, they're, in, they're, they're Sunday in, league. They're in Sunday league England, yeah. lower leagues England, mm. um, just because of their situation. At the end of the day, you just gotta love the game, that's it. Mm -hmm. Because you can't focus on a negative part of the game, you know, because you just never know. Once you know those kind of situation and you're going through those up and down, mm -hmm. you'll never be stressful because you already know, mm -hmm. right? Because you, you already know. Yeah. And, you and, see people like, mm, you think you're good, bro, good fucking, Third division in uh, in Finland, you see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing, too. That's why, like, when bad things happen in real life to me, yeah. like, I've been through so many downs, like, bad downs, and yeah. so many ups and so many highs, and then suddenly I go back down again, yeah. that a lot of things don't affect me anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've been through it, I've seen it, and it's yeah. like, for example, I, I want to... I want to make sure that that uh, my mental health yeah. is prioritized, right? Um, so, like, the experiences that I've had, nothing compares to it. You know, something yeah. something will happen in life, and I'm like, okay, well, yeah, been through this it before. Yeah. It's okay. You Damn, know? bro, that's, that's crazy. A lot of these things have happened, whether it's through football or or whether it's you know, traveling to football, and you know, especially during that COVID era, there's there's some crazy stuff that happened to me, right? So, yeah. you know, it's uh, it's it's the all part of the journey, and then when you get those highs. When you get those big games, you win those big games, I, I wouldn't replace it for anything. You've been traveling a lot here and yeah. there. Sleeping in airports. Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> living, living out of suitcases. Dude, that's, yeah. You know, people don't see those stories, they though. They don't see those, those parts, man. They don't see, that is crazy, you know? man. Like, you know? I remember it, I was um, on my way to Finland one year, and um, I got, it was COVID, and I got denied at the gates of Finland. Like, denied. Like, had my visa, had all my papers, had everything. Denied at the gates because of COVID, and they went to an emergency lockdown. Bro, that's crazy. <laughs> I, they, they took me downstairs to, like, the, um, the dungeon. <laughs> no, but they took me downstairs to, like, just for questioning yeah, and, yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. You know, they, they kind of... Because you're black. No, not even that. No, not even that. <laughs> just more just because more they have to. Like, yeah, if, yeah. if you get denied at the gates, they, like, it's policy, yeah. it's policy that they have to run your background. So, anyways, I was down there asking me questions and stuff like that, and... You know what I mean? I had to start talking like a lawyer, you know, and like... Oh, like talk big. Like, yeah, talk yeah, big. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but anyways, they they, <laughs> re, they, re, they rerouted my flight back to Canada. Yeah. And uh, was, this was obviously COVID era, so flights started getting canceled and started sleeping in airports. I tried to find backup plans. Yeah. Backup plan was found. Couldn't travel to the States because, I, you know, because COVID, it was, everything was shut down there. And um, I actually ended up staying a week in Netherlands. Um, spe yeah, specifically Amsterdam. Enjoyed it, to be honest with you. It was, you know, how, how was the, langu the language? Uh, just everybody kind of speaks like English. At, I, I stayed at like, a, like an English speaking hotel. It was like an international hotel oh, okay, by the okay, airport. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, but then, like, it was everything, everyone was chill there. But then I ended up like not having data on my phone. And at one point, I just I went to like the downtown Amsterdam. Yeah. And uh, just no phone, no data, no nothing. And just went to a park, just chilled, relaxed, and just, you know, decompressed, man. It was a lot going on that week, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's, it's been sh quite stressful. So it was, um, it was nice to be in a different country, um, a country especially that was the only country that was open yeah. um, during the COVID time. So, actually? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Spe especially for, for foreigners, you know what yeah, I mean? It was yeah, like yeah. the only country that actually allowed someone in. It was just a difficult time period. And, you know, it, a lot of other stuff happened during that time and that, that was mentally testing. And yeah. so nothing, <laughs> it's a lot, it takes a lot to phase me now, you know? Takes a lot. You've been through it, right? Been through it, man. That's a good experience. That's amazing. Yeah, and don't, don't get me wrong. Like I, I have bad experiences, but there's people out there who have had way worse. Worse. There are people, ah, so I some, like that. There's some people. There's some people who are gonna watch this and be like, "Ah, oh, that's nothing." That's nothing, you know bro. What I mean? And like, like that, I'm not saying that's my worst experience, but you know what I mean. People have people get those things, especially yeah. footballers, especially athletes. Yeah. And you know what I mean. That stuff behind the scenes, people don't people see don't talk it. about. People don't see yeah. it. You know. Wow. You think, they think it's all sunshine and rainbow. It's, it's not. <laughs> it's never sunshine and rainbow, yeah. bro. It's never. Only, that's what I say, social media, bro, it's like, it's killing a lot of uh, generation. You know, everybody want to see, oh my God, Neymar. But you don't mm -hmm. know what Neymar went through when he was exactly. 12. You know, exactly. like, it's just, 
we all see the sunshines and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't know really this story. Be mm -hmm. It's crazy, man. Me, I understand it. People man. think Neymar's taking advantage of, of, what, of what's has been given to him. Yeah. But in, in reality, you know what I mean? Who knows what's going on behind, behind yeah. the scenes for him? Yeah. You know? His family, you know. All, you, all we know is football. Yeah, all we know right. is his football. Exactly. Yeah. And, if he's not, and if he's not performing on the pitch, people are automatically, oh, Neymar's done. Neymar's done this and that. Ah. You know what I mean? His, his level's going down. Yeah. But you don't, you don't really know what's, what's yeah. actually happening to him. You know, true, you, you hear true. things here and there, but you hear rumors and all of that. But, you know, this guy's actually, he could be really struggling, you know? 100% mentally, right? Yeah, Because money, yeah, you could have money, but there's always yeah. mentality. Exactly. There, money, right? injuries, expectations, pressure, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. If you could start over again as a footballer, this is 12 years, this is 7 years old, 10 years old, what would you change? If you could start like a little you and like, okay, now I know what's in front of me, what, what would you do? I would train every day. Yeah. I, I feel like uh, as a kid, I didn't I didn't take football that seriously. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll train twice my, twice a week with my team, and then just hang out with my friends the rest of the week and yeah. just chill. And you know what I mean? I, I'll get better. Yeah. You know, but if I would t if I would take it back, I wish I could, you know what I mean? I didn't have I didn't have like a parent figure to like take yeah. me out and train every day to push me. You know what I mean? It was it was just me going out with my friends and yeah. you know seeing them <laughs> seeing them outside in the park, going yeah. out and you know stepping in between stepping in between uh, two mailboxes and stopping shots. That's you know, crazy. <laughs> you know and. Uh, it was there was those moments that made me love the game. Yeah. But I wouldn't and I wouldn't take it back for the world. But I I wish I did it more frequently, you know. And mm. I wish I, you know, didn't get up to the things that I did in high school rather yeah. than and just and just continue with my football, you know, continue with my football over and over again. And it wasn't until university where I started to really smarten up, and that was um, that was a big that was a big game changer for me. Yeah. You know, especially in the, my, the my football career, and then it wasn't until after university when I moved to Toronto to pursue football that that it was an eye opener for me and it made me really realize what i need to do in life t in order to make it to the next level yeah and yes i did t to an extent make it to the next level but uh, imagine if i had started earlier imagine if i had, st I had stuck to my craft a little bit earlier i could have been yeah i could have hopefully been at that one percent you grew up in ottawa right yeah born in ottawa yeah so you, that's your home that's like your yeah. core that's where most of your best friends, childhood best friends were there. Yeah, and my family and stuff. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you meet Jordel? Actually, it was his ex-girlfriend. Um, I needed, a, I wanted a place to live in Toronto. Posted, she posted a, a spot that was uh, that was available, and um, it was the upstairs unit of their house. They were living in the basement, of yeah. a single house. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I inquired and got the place, and uh, that's where I met Jordel. Yeah. And yeah, the rest was history. Wow, mm -hmm. that's crazy, man. Count to the big city, pursue. Your your goal was to get in like League One, or your goal was just to get in like whatever. League One, yeah. It was just more just League One to see, you know, what, oh, what, what I can do. Yeah, yeah, more competitive. Uh, yeah. Um, the CPL like was just getting on at that point. You know what I mean? It was. I think it was just like being announced shortly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was the main goal to make it to the CPL and whatnot. And you know, I've had trials here and there, and you know what I mean. And I've, you know, I've I've had opportunities and You're getting close. Yeah, and I've gotten real close, you know. But obviously, no dice at at this point right now. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, just training training in professional environments for a long period of time. For example, training with Atletico Ottawa that that was a big deal for me. And you know yeah. what I mean. And that was a, an eye opener too. You know, training with these top keepers, training with these top players. They actually won the league that year. You know what I mean? And, oh, yeah. And, and, and in, in seeing that, you know what I mean? It's, it was Inspired. incredible. It was incredible that these guys, these guys, the work that these guys put in every single day, not just the work on the pitch, but the extra work. Yeah. I had a lot of, a lot of respect for it. Mm -hmm. But now you're in, uh, with, uh, you work with OPSM now. You yeah. Know, yeah. The... So, so I work with OPSM on, on their, in their collegiate management. Yeah. Um, so I'm the executive of that. And I, uh. He's a big dog. Stop <laughs> playing with him. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's a big dog. He's gonna, yo, this guy's gonna be on a billboard. Give him, give him a couple of years. He's gonna be on that. Or Young and Dundas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, one of those. Young and Dundas. You be there, bro. Yeah, one why day, not? One day you never know. Why, why know you? Mm -hmm. If it's not you, who then? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's possible. Mm -hmm. So essentially, what I do is I I, I provide uh, consulting for parents and players. Yeah. Um, on the collegiate process and essentially assess assess players' levels and understand. Okay, this is where yeah. this is where you need to go. Whether it's D1, D2, and NCAA. Or whether they should stick around in youth sports, depending on their budget, mm. depending on their goals, and depending yeah. essentially what their parents want too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Because a lot of parents, you know, especially first generation Canadians, um, the, those parents don't really understand the process in which it takes because they never went to school in Canada, yeah. right? For example, and um, I'm 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 always here to educate them on on what's needed in the process yeah. and you know what the, what their budget needs to be, yeah. and it what, this allows them to give them time to think that okay. 
what what do we have to do as parents in order to in order to make this a reality for our child yeah you know um is is our child shooting for the stars right now is like if he goes if he's trying to go to ncaa d1 he's not getting answers what what does he need to do in order to understand his level and yeah. to understand where he needs to go because is he wasting his time right now right um so these are these are all the questions that need to be asked and it's uh yeah it's a whole it's a whole process and um, it's I'm happy to do it as well. It's good environment because you learn you, you learn quicker people's people's like lives like the situation their lives what they want you know mm -hmm. it gives you that step ahead of just thinking like just to be ahead of the time you know mm -hmm. you 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 become very different like your your perspective is seeing stuff it's just like yo what the, yeah it's crazy know? it's crazy to think like I've seen a lot of a lot of kids uh, from grade eleven to grade twelve that I've seen them really grow up. Seen them really change. I've really seen them open up yeah. as as kids, as as growing growing from a boy to a man. Yeah. You know, and uh, even some of these kids have end up have ended up getting drafted. You know what I mean? Um, so it's it's really amazing to see, and it's uh, it's I'm happy to to help these kids, help their parents, and educate yeah. them, and and make sure that they're that they're they're essentially doing the right steps in the process. Yeah, we're gonna have to get you a billboard, bro. <laughs> This to, guy needs a billboard, man. To be honest, I wish I had that when I was a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I ended up staying in Ottawa, going to Carleton. And that was, you know, I'm happy I did that and stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know if I could take my game elsewhere. You know what I mean? I, it's, all I knew was to stay local and, yeah, you know, and it's yeah, all my yeah. parents could afford and whatnot, right? Um, but, you know what I mean? If someone was there to educate me and to tell me, hey, this is what you need to do. These are the grades you need to hit this year and in order to, in order yeah. to achieve the levels that you want to achieve, right? Um, and, you know what I mean? It's... It's a it's a very it's a very valuable service that obviously I like to provide for for, yeah. for players and parents and it's um yeah it's rewarding in the end. Wow, taking solo trips those mm -hmm. are the, those are the most yeah, yeah. hard ones. Yeah. Solo, the trips, solo trips. Nobody those are crazy. Those, yeah. You don't even know where you're staying. Mm -hmm. Maybe what the place you stay you only have one day mm -hmm. left and you don't know what to go next. Exactly, you don't know who's gonna pick you up. That you know is what I mean? crazy, you bro. Know, like I've been in some <laughs> I've been in some bad environments yeah. where you're like what. Yeah, I'm in a room with no windows and and uh, a single bed, and just because I'm a trialist or like well, like what's like what's going it's on? It's amazing. It's, what's going on here? You know what I mean? Like staying in hotels and you know whatnot. I've, and I've had some good experiences too. You know, staying in like proper hotels and stuff that the teams have been funding and yeah. things like that. But it's uh, it's also those it's those high experiences that are great, but then those low experiences really really show you, you those know, like, will make you like okay really think you know, you know, like, why, yeah. why am i here yeah i got sweet is this is what i is this what i meant to be like is yeah. this, is this what is this, this is, is, it? is this the process you know yeah. what i mean yeah um but then you know those and when those high when those highs come it makes it all worth it in the end you know billboard yeah. i'm finding a billboard for you bro i don't know how but i'm gonna find it for you <laughs> i know you're chelsea guy yeah. right i know you're pretty much you know a lot of uh, football history by now um, so mm -hmm. let's see who won the Champions League in 2023. City. Ah, this guy is quick, man. Go that's on. an easy one, though. Okay, man. Come okay. on, that's who won the Champions League 2021? Chelsea. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. I, obviously, you know. Okay, who won the World Cup in 2000, 2002? Oof, that's a tough one. Spain. No. Germany. No. That one, that one you're thinking right now. It's not England. It wasn't England. England is no, way yeah, back, I, I was going to say way back. <laughs> way back. Spain. Why is it? France. Nah, bro. Nah. What? Who won? Brazil. Oh, Brazil. Yeah, Brazil. Uh, okay, 20, that's 2002, no? You, yeah. you, you don't have memories? Yeah, I was, I was young. I was a young boy yeah. back. I was a young buck back then. Remember my dad used to drag me when I was a little boy, bro. I remember on all the way to his haircut, mm -hmm. the R9. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the thing with me, too, like... Like, I would say I didn't really grow up in a footballing family. It was more just me getting into it. And like, oh, now I've okay. kind of, I've kind of created that generation, that generation for my family, hopefully in the future. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say that like, I more kept up with football through my friends and yeah. uh, stuff like that. And um, I never really had someone to, to push me into watching football or anything. And, you know, it's, it was, yeah. You know, the thing about me is just because I think I grew up in, uh, my dad, uh, I grew up in Burundi. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a city, in, it's a country in mm -hmm. Africa. My mm -hmm. dad sent me in a village to my uncle. Back then, like back home in the village, my dad, my, my uncle just had like the farm, the, the, co the goat, the cows and shit. All we do, bro, is school and football. School and football. Literally, no shoes. We don't care. Look, bro, no shoes, nothing in the Not mud, in the rain. We, because there's nothing to do. They, you can't sit inside. There's no TV. We had TV by sight. B what cartoon? You yeah. used to watch cartoon, but yeah. other than that, it's like we go outside, play, uh, fight, 
all that stuff, mm -hmm. play a little like games. We used to be so creative back mm -hmm. then, yeah, but yeah. now you don't have to be creative. I got PS5, I mean, the house and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. But back then, to be good, you got to be outside because we don't experience like mental health back home yeah. when we were younger because we just outside. We mm -hmm. get beat up by our parents. Mm -hmm. Okay, shit, you can go play, mm -hmm. you know? So all we did was playing, playing, playing. So that's how I developed my, my skill as a player because I used to play. If you think about it, nowadays, bro, the kids are becoming robotic. That's the what players. I mean. Yeah. They don't even know. Like, they're waiting for the coach to tell them what to do. That's what I mean. That's, right? that's what I'm saying. When I was a kid, I wish I was just out playing all the time and, oh. and whatnot. You know, instead of hanging out with my friends and yeah. doing stuff, I was, I was just playing, playing, yeah. playing, playing. Developing my skills, honing my skills. Yeah. And that's what they do in Africa. Yeah, they just you saw, you saw today in the AFCON. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nigeria it's, wins, bro. It's amazing, it's, bro. It's, it's, it's amazing. amazing. You know? Who do you want to win? I want Nigeria to win. Yeah. Aussie, Aussie man, that's why. Do you have Nigerian friends? A couple Nigerian guys? Yeah, you know? I'm Nigerian friends, yeah. That's probably, yeah. That's probably why you say that. Mm -hmm. who, won the, who won the World Cup in 1998? Oh, God, you're killing me. Brazil? No. I thought the Brazil, most famous I, I thought Brazil won it twice in a row, that's, that's why I say that. Um, I'm not sure. France. Remember? Was it, was it France? Remember Zidane? You're saying remember Zidane, but I was, two, I was two years old. Man. I, was two I mean, years. now it's, it's like, yeah, now yeah. it's like, now it's there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. like, now everybody like, like I, I, I watched that World Cup on YouTube. Like mm -hmm. when I was young, I was like, oh, my dad is showing me, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. um, Ronaldinho back then, but Barcelona when I was young, my dad used to say, oh, watch this. this Who was in the finals? It was, it was France, France and... France and Italy, I think. Oh, you know, okay. that time uh, Zidane hit the... No, 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 no. They lost that one. No. I think it was... No, it was France and Brazil. France and Brazil, yeah. yeah I yeah. believe so, I believe okay, so. Okay. Yeah, that that's the sense. time, yeah. Good ball knowledge, bro, good ball knowledge. But this one is going to be tougher. It's a tough one, okay. Anyways, this is the toughest one. You, I'm going to name a player, yeah? You just guess their country, where they come from. Okay. Like if I say Jared, Canadian. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, Giovanni De Santos. Italy. Mexico. Oh. Okay. Giovanni de Santos. Yeah, yeah, dos Santos. Yeah. You know him, right? Giovanni de Santos? Yeah, yeah. Used yeah. to be a Barca crazy yeah, yeah. player. I swear I thought he was Italian. That's crazy. Oh. Okay, I'm wrong. Okay. Musa Dembele. France. Belgium. Belgium. You know the guy play for yes. uh, Tottenham, yes, right? Yes, I know Musa Dembele. Saucy. I really thought he was France. I really yeah. thought he was France. This one you're going to know. Ricardo Corisma. Oof. Um, Bro, you have to know this one. Ricardo Corisma. Rabona. Yeah, I know him. And uh, how you call this one? Trivedo, whatever you call it? Trivella, yeah. Yeah. Now, this one you have to know. Was it Italy? Nah, no. Portuguese. Portugal. Oh, I should have known that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this one's probably okay. hard. Andre, are you? Ghana. Oh, yeah. how the fuck you know that one? Because I have, I have a lot of Ghanaian friends. Oh, okay. I, oh yeah, your yeah. PSN, the boys, yeah, yeah. the boys. Yeah. This one is hard, though. Emmanuel Petit. Well, that sounds French to me. Well, where is he from, then? Emmanuel Petit. Yeah. He was in the World Cup as well back then. Okay, <laughs> I think France is too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Friends is too easy. Yo. <laughs> Bro. No, he's Canadian. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, cut, Bro, cut, this cut, gonna cut, be, cut, this cut, 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 cut. This is gonna be the funniest. He's French. He's French, okay. So but I you, was, didn't, you didn't confirm. I, I didn't confirm, okay, okay. <laughs> But you made it sound like it was a trick question. Yeah, I have to make it. I can't give you a hint. All right, Gabriel Jesus. Brazil. Jack Grealish. England. Alex Song. Oof. Mm. Cote d'Ivoire? Cameroon. Cameroon, okay. That was, that was tough. That's, that's that was tough. Like, yeah. Emmanuel Eboué. Cameroon. Cote d'Ivoire. Oh, it's okay. Uh, David Alaba. Uh, he's, um, uh, what's it called? Um, really? beside, beside Germany. Oh, yeah, uh, that's tough. That's a little... Beside Germany. Uh, what's that's it called tough again? Tough one. Um, uh, what's that spot beside Germany? Sorry, O. Oh. Okay, come back. Come back to him. Come back to him. Okay, okay, okay. Michael Lilly. 
Oh, I should know this one. Ghana. Claude Makele, remember Chelsea guy? I know, I know. I thought it was Ghana. He's Congolese. Co- is he Congolese? Okay. But he played for France, though. Yeah. No, I thought you were going to say France. All Black. Oh, Jan All Black. It's uh, Slovakia. Or Czech Slova- Republic. Slovenia. Slo- Slovenia. Slovenia. Yeah, Slovenia. Yeah, I was confused. Right? This one is tough. If you, fi- if you get this one, bro, I'll give you $20. I'm not even playing. Saido Berahino. I don't even know who that is. Oh, okay, so, okay, 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 okay. Like, Alge- sounds like, a, like Algeria. No, he's a Burundian. Burundian, okay. Yeah, he's still in Premier League. Okay, okay. Yeah, he got dr- like, he literally went like lower division, bro. Mm-hmm. From Premier League to down. That's oh, what yeah? the stories you're saying. Uh, go back to David Alaba. <sighs> what is this? This country. My, my boy Sohil was there. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the side Germany. Uh, God. I, I don't know why I can't think Austria. of Austria. <laughs> Austria. Yeah, yeah, Austria. That's, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. that's it's tricky. That one is mm. tricky. If you if you if you give me those as well, I'll get a couple of them, but that one is very mm-hmm. tricky. Is it? Crystal Palace. Mm-hmm. Uh Bakayo Saka. Mm-hmm. Which one would you pick? You have to pick oh, one. Bakayo Saka. He's been. Bakayo Saka. Yeah, he's been just top for a little bit longer than Eze. Yeah. You know what I mean, Eze's, yeah, Eze's top, but Bakayo Saka's doing it at Arsenal, and he does it. He's been doing it consistently for the past three, four years, mm. five years. Okay. You know. Jude Bellingham, Phil Foden. Jude Bellingham. Yeah. You Especially so? after this year, Whew. this guy's on fire. Yeah. Phil Foden is not bad as well. Phil Foden's good, really, really good too. But I think I think Jude Bellingham has just been over the top. Overall. Yeah. Like, how are you the the best player on Real Madrid. Like, yeah. You know? Out of nowhere, you know. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, Declan Rice, Rodri. Rodri. Yeah, for sure. Mbappe, Vinny Jr. Come Mbappe, on, bro. Mbappe, Mbappe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, come yeah, on. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Come on, I had to think about that one, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Vinny was balling in Champions League. He was balling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been balling And then, still. to be honest with you, he has more accolades than Mbappe, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. We'll see once he goes yeah. to Madrid. We'll, we'll see. see. Yeah. He's going to go to Madrid, you know. Mbappe or Neymar. In your Mbappe. Team. Mbappe, yeah. Edison or Allison? Oof, that's a tough one. I would say Allison because I think that Allison is an overall better shot stopper. Yeah. Edison, yes, has better distribution, but I, I still do think Allison's distribution is, is quite, a, quite elite does. as well. It's just Edison's is, is the best in the world, right? Mm. But I would say Allison is a better shot stopper, is maybe a little bit better at reading the game as well. And I've, yeah, I've, he's he scored a goal for Liverpool. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. that header was class. Have you ever scored a goal? No, but I, I've I've been one time, uh, twenty twenty two. Um, I almost got scored on by a keeper. It was it was Praveen actually. No. So Praveen, if you're watching this, I remember that. Yeah. 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 Last minute of the game, uh, was, I think it was um, a scramble in the box, and I just. Yeah, I saved it on Praveen. It, like, yeah, it would have been a crazy moment, though. He would have been, yeah, like, yeah. mocking you for the rest of his life. You remember yeah, that, bro? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I it think... never happened before, a goal he scored on you? No, no, never. Onana or Dunarama? Dunaruma. Dunaruma. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Onana's been a little bit underwhelming this year, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Martinez or Courtois? Courtois. Yeah? Yeah, Courtois. Just that, that game that he had in the Champions League final. Like... <laughs> Liverpool? I, I think, think it was Liverpool. Liverpool. It was Liverpool. Liverpool. Yeah, it was Liverpool. <laughs> crazy, yeah. Even yeah, the world, even the World game. Cup, you kind of like okay, yeah. you know. Yeah. But Martinez is class too. Like you know, what I mean, especially when he when he's at penalties, yeah. like he's he's so good. But I just think that that performance overall by Courtois in the finals. I think Courtois has been longer in a tough club, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. He's, been, he's you know he's at Chelsea. You know, I respect him for mm-hmm. that too. Right. Mo Salah or Roberto Lewandowski? Which one would you? Mo put? Salah. Mo Salah. Yeah. Mm, for okay. sure. Dembele, Osmani Dembele, or Lloris Sané. Dembele is crazy. Yeah, Sané they're, is they're, both, they're both ballers, but I would say, I would say Leroy Sané because Dembele yeah. is a little bit injury prone. So is Leroy Sané too, but I, I like I like Leroy Sané. Yeah, he's clean. Mm, Sané, name your top six. Like this is your six v six World Cup. Like who would, who would you bring? I don't care. anything prime, from like old ages until now. What top six would you pick? From like a goalie to like my my mid- keeper would be Petr Cech. Yeah, for sure. Ooh. Um, my center backs. I'm, I'm I'm a little bit Chelsea biased. Oh say. my god! It's so, I, boy, say, I, I keep uh, getting Chelsea people. I gotta yeah. stop this. <laughs> I would say John Terry. Ooh, John Terry. Yeah. Over Ramos. That's yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's, that's my guy, John Terry. He'll uh, he'll go through a brick wall for me. I, I know that. You know. <laughs> 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 um, and then uh, left back. 
Left back, I would say um, Ashley Cole. Ooh, Nip. Yeah. yeah, I keep forgetting yeah, that Ashley guy. Cole. He was a baller. Yeah. Uh, right back, right back, I will go Kyle Walker. Walker. Yeah. No, you I, need two I midfield. Kevin De Bruyne. He didn't even blink. Yeah. Um, KDB. Hazard. Oh, okay. Mo Salah. In the whole world, you picking Mo Salah as a striker? Am I? Am I being? No, I say Mbappe. Mbappe. That's crazy. You didn't even put Messi. Messi is not anywhere close. No, Messi's there. Messi's there for me, but it's it's. There's it's just a, no space for him. There's just too many. I, I told you, I'm biased. I'm biased. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. I'm that, makes more, that makes more. That makes more sense. You know, who is your favorite player of all time? This is the guy who's just like wow. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 Messi. Messi. Yeah, especially after the World Cup. Yeah, it's Messi. The guy is crazy. Yeah, guy. yeah like different. Uh, just um, I, I actually used to be a Ronaldo fan, yeah. but after the World Cup and I saw what actually? he did, yeah, yeah, not like a crazy Ronaldo fan, but I was like, if, yeah, yeah, if like, someone asked me between Messi and Ronaldo, I would say Ronaldo just because of his athletic ability and whatnot. Yeah. But after what I saw Messi do in that World Cup, yeah, it was absolutely incredible. Like, um, now Messi is just yeah, crazy, man. It was just I don't insane. even I don't even know how to describe that guy anymore. Yeah, and so that compl I completely switched after that, and um, yeah, you know what I mean, and. I still have a lot of respect for Ronaldo. Yeah. But um, yeah, me what Messi did, it's it was just yeah. Favorite coach of all time. Favorite coach of all time. Best coach of all time, in my opinion, is probably Pep Guardiola. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I like Pape. He's uh, the way he just get into players' head and show them. But I feel like favorite, I would say Mourinho. Yeah, okay. Because I, I, I think he's been through like low, like no, like high elite teams. Mm -hmm. Just you know, he's Roma. Yeah. I uh, went to Milan, won the yeah, thing. Yeah, Mourinho is also a close second for me as well. Yeah. Um, I just think that um, when it comes to adversity, Pape. He, no, when it comes to adversity, I don't think Mourinho always handles it the the best. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think part of being a coach is you know how you handle the media, yeah. how you portray yourself to the public. Uh, you know what I mean? I think that's also and like you know I mean how you know how it for example and how you keep the dressing room to like you. I think Mourinho's had instances where the dressing room fell out with him. Yeah. Right? And um I think Pep Guardiola maybe I'm not sure Pep Guardiola maybe maybe had the same similar situation, but yeah. he's just he's just been class for longer, right? Especially after this these this these years he's had with City, it's he's, yeah. he's a phenom, right? Yeah. So. Who's your favorite goal of all time? Better check. Yeah. Actually, it's biased. It's biased though. Yeah, but okay, yeah, okay, but okay. better check, yeah. If you're being honest, no bias, what would you think is a second? I would say Allison. Edison? Yeah. Allison. Allison? Yeah. Uh, Liverpool? Yeah. Mm, okay. Of all time? Yeah. If you could hang out with one person in the world, who would you hang out with? That's a good question. I don't, I don't really f like look at celebrities like that, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Um, like, a, like I, don't, I don't really care to hang out with you. You know what I mean? If it's, I, it could I be anybody. Yeah, it could be anybody. Um, I would say... <laughs> Maybe me. No, <laughs> I would say uh, Thierry Henry. Yeah. yeah, he's he's, he's so right? he's so funny on the on the CBS podcast. Yeah, he's you heard so his uh, his uh, podcast, the other one, the one, the deep one. Uh, no, the, I haven't heard of it. No, the one he was talking about his childhood and stuff. No, I should, oh, I should, okay. take a you should to watch it. it. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, he he gives the behind the scenes as well mm -hmm. about like football yeah. and shit. How his because his dad was like African. Yeah. That's different. Yeah, yeah. You have to make it. Like you have no choice. I, I also like Micah as well. Who? Micah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really like him. That guy like, could he's be so funny, bro. He could be. He's just a vibe yeah. anywhere. Yeah. And, and, and actually, you know what? Switch it for Mike. Uh, for Mike. Uh, Mike. Uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, like because yeah. no, I, I, like, I feel like I would really enjoy my time yeah. with him. Thierry Henry, I might have to be too serious. You know what I mean? I might have to like. Yeah. You know, Thierry yeah. is kind of like class and yeah. funny. You know, exactly. Exactly. But he can't he would, be too funny as well. He can't be too funny with him. You know what I mean? But yeah. I think if Mike, I would. I would you could laugh he, he, he all would day. Be two jokes. Yeah. That's crazy. Um. Favorite movie of all time? Um, favorite movie of all time? Wow, I have, a, I have quite a few, actually. One movie I really liked was Interstellar. Mm, never heard yeah. of that one. Uh, it's, a movie with, it's a movie about um, as Sandra Bullock. Um, she was, like, she was um, a space engineer, and uh, she, she had to go to space for whatever reason. And uh, she was, like, but she was looked down upon because she was a woman. Yeah. And she, she kind of like, went, like faced those adversities, and, and um, it's kind of that's kind of like a uh, a testament to you know how women are in in uh, the STEM in STEM like uh, in the science, technology, engineering, and mechanic industry, and how they're how they're kind of treated. So yeah. I thought that was quite an, quite an interesting movie. But I feel like if I had more time to think about this, I would think about another movie. But that movie came to my head because I you know I've I've, I've chatted with people about it before. So, yeah. Yeah. Manny's always Scarface. Scarface, huh? Yeah, I have the yeah. post as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. What's your favorite show of all time? Prison Break. I like it. Bro, uh, yeah? no way. <laughs> really? Get out of here, bro. Yeah, yeah, you did my first match ever. <laughs> yeah. That's Prison crazy. Prison Break was a crazy show. No, yeah. Yeah. bro. My dad, when we came to Canada, that was the first, because I didn't know about shows and shit. My dad like, used to watch that. I'm like, what are you watching, bro? It's a Prison Break. So we just watch along because yeah. there's nothing to do. Bro, I enjoy that shit. The moment you watch it, so everything good. feels real, bro. So One time I was like, this is real? Like, he's like, no, it's a, it's a show. But yeah. it just feels like, yo, this I is know. crazy. I know. Prison Break. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah, that's the best show. Crazy show. Anybody who hasn't watched Prison Break, you're missing out. Like, you're missing mm. out, bro. My second favorite is like Money Heist, which is like that's the recent one. one. That's, that's a good, a good one, one too, one yeah. Well. One meal you could eat for the rest of the year. I would say curry goat. Ooh. Rice and peas. Okay, you know and, he's uh, Caribbean, nice, bro. And then a nice, a nice, a nice salad on the side, just really? like I get, just like I get my veggies, and yeah. I'm good. I can eat that the rest of my life. We already know I he's, pro he's I promise Caribbean. you that. Yeah. Okay. Mm. He's been biased. You, have you ever tried African food? Of course. I think it's kind of like of the course. same, close. Yeah. 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 Booming. Yeah. Which culture has the best food? I would say that um, the Asian and Caribbean like fusion. There's there's yeah. a lot of those restaurants out there, and yeah. I think that. You know, especially there's a lot of Asians in the Caribbean that, that make food and have restaurants and stuff like that. And yeah. I would say that their food is quite similar. So I would say ideally Asian Caribbean food is my his. Okay. Like for example, you go to you go to a lot of Asian um, Asian international grocery stores, you see Caribbean food there. You know, yeah. you see like, you see oxtail, you see yeah. you see all of that kind of stuff, right? So yeah. there's a reason why because their food is quite similar. You know. But uh, African food I like I like African food. African food you know, is hey, good. Hey, I like my jollof rice. <laughs> don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> African food is good, but don't eat it every day. It's so booming. It's, it's, it's bloated. It, it bloats you. Yeah, yeah like yeah, it's yeah. so amazing. But yo, yeah. you, you, you're gonna get you're yeah. gonna get fat. Look at look at my uncle. Look at my my, my dad's friend. They yeah. all big because they love the food, bro. One of my boys in Finland. Um, he was Nigerian. He was on my team as well, and uh, we, we lived with each other. And he would make he would make jollof rice. No every day. way. And bro, amazing! It was amazing, amazing. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Tant yeah. Tantalized my stomach, bro. <laughs> no way. Yeah, obviously, but yeah. It's, when you're eating, it's just you're enjoying it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, pick one: cooking or cleaning. I, I like both. I don't mind both, but yeah. cooking, cooking, cooking. Yeah. yeah. You know how to cook? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Or you like like snacky cook? Like I'm not a snacky cook. Uh, we can, I'm the type. I'm the type. I like to cook in uh, big batches mm. so that I can meal prep for the week. Oh, you know okay, I, mean? I, okay. I don't got time to cook every night, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't cook you a single meal. got that discipline, yeah. got that discipline, yeah, yeah. And then I'll, I'll make a bunch of Tupperwares and stuff like that, have my lunches, you know. You know the thing about me, I'll make, like, I always call my sister, yo, can you make me this type of food? She'll make me like a bunch, then I'll go pick them up. But the thing is, I don't follow it. I'll just go, I'll be like, oh, I'll, I'll see, like, I'll come in, oh, man, I don't want to use no microwave, I'm just gonna make a quick bread and then freaking butter and just eat and just, you know? I, I know those ones. Yeah, yeah. so it's ones. just like, yo, bro, it's not that hard, bro. Diet? Are you do you are you like strict on a diet or just like trying to keep it? As... Um, off season, I'm I'm not crazy strict. Yeah. Uh, I try not to overeat, obviously, but yeah. in season, I'm 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 probably a little bit more strict because I know that what's going to be in my body is going to be outputted on the pitch as well, mm. right? So I'm I'm definitely a little bit more strict in season. Yeah. Um, but uh, but obviously, you know, like here and there, I'll, I'll have a weekend where I go out and eat and whatnot. Yeah. And, um, and that's, you know, I enjoy myself regardless. That's good. That's like, life is yeah. short, man. Yeah. Reality show, documentary. Uh, reality show. Mm, okay. Tattoos or piercing? Uh, I like, I like both, but I, I would say that, I would say tattoos. Mm. Yeah. Education or experience? Education. Yeah. Education, yeah. You have two choices. You yeah, have to like... go to University of, uh, uh, Washington or you have to go to Real, uh, Real Madrid, uh, uh, academy which one would oh you pick? my god that's a, that's a tough one i mean i would say i would say that i would it depends on the circumstances to be honest with you if, I, if i'm going to real madrid academy and i'm a i'm a young boy and and i have a scholarship at uh, at the university of washington but i have the chance to be playing amongst that one percent making multi multi millions yes of course i'm picking real madrid okay but i would say in most cases in most cases i would choose education that's for the kids. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, PS, same agent. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know, he's coming from <laughs> looks or personality in a woman. Personality. Personality. Yeah. You don't matter how she looks like. No, it it does matter, but I would say that personality is like like the long term, right? Because yeah, yeah you can be as pretty as you want, but but the first yeah. thing you see is looks, right? Oh yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Yeah, looks first. But upon approaching uh, so, approaching someone, like after like a couple of years, then yeah. then you know, like personality. Yeah, sure, sure. Out. Yeah, if you wanted to talk about long term, but in terms of like actually having a conversation with someone, I have to be captivated 
by you mentally as mm. well. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's uh, I think I think it's a little bit different that way. But I think, yeah, you have to you have to be able to actually hold a conversation. <laughs> I guess. Mm. You know? what, what's your type? I don't know how, I don't know how you say types. Uh, Yo. you're, you're, you're going deep here. <laughs> no, I'm just curious. Yeah. Everybody have their own. Uh, opinion. Someone, someone that's unique. Someone, like I said, that that uh, can captivate me mentally, and you know, someone that can hold down a conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah, and someone that's just different. You know what I mean? And someone that, like, even someone that resonates with the things that I resonate with as well. And we have to have things in common. A little chemistry. Um, yeah, a little chemistry. But then we also can be different because I'd love to learn more about about you and. You know what what differences that maybe I could grow into. You know what I mean. And then vice versa, the things with me, what differences that you can grow into with me. Yeah. You know, and I think we that, in that way you kind of grow together. That's actually good. Mm -hmm. One of one of my ex girl, she was like, I don't think she's gonna be with you because you're, you're you're different. Like she think you're most likely gonna cheat because you flip. You like you talk to girls. You know what I mean? Like I'm like, oh, okay, but she was wrong, obviously. But then maybe she sees my character as oh, okay. I understand. I'm not mm. gonna push anything. Mm -hmm. well, no, what? Okay, cool. That's what I said. But then I was like, I like, I like the way she is because she's different. She's like a, a home, a home girl. Like mm -hmm. she, she doesn't do parties and shit. She's like really good girl. So mm -hmm. I like that, that part of her. But she liked me because I was like, you know how girls just like you because what you have, like what you, who you, you have access yeah. to, like the shit who you, you are do. as a person, right? Yeah, 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 right. But in the long term, she's like, he may be. He may gonna. I'm not gonna commit to him because he may gonna leave me. You know what I mean? She had like yeah. that little fear, like my, he may switch up with me, type of mm -hmm. shit. And I was like, I understand. Yeah, yeah. She was wrong, but I understand. But you made her happy at, the, at those moments. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent, better. Hundred percent. They all know. They all know. She probably listen. <laughs> they they to all this. know. Yeah. She probably listen to this. Uh, would you rather live in a city or countryside? City. Really? Yeah. Wow. Countryside, yeah. Like you mean, like a rural area? I'm talking about like up there in like uh, Simcoe, like. No, oh, yeah, city, city. City, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love your city. Yeah. Even yeah. if you have like a big, big compound outside the city, you just rather live in a. Yeah, I'm just more. I'm more of a city guy, to be honest with you. Like, I don't mind the country at all. It's not. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not a bad thing per se. Yeah. And I and I would live in the country if the cir my circumstances were like that. Yeah. But yeah, but I, I think I'm just more of a city guy in general, like a. I like being around people and, you know, I like having, having close access to things and, yeah. you know what I mean? And, uh, just going outside and I don't, I don't mind, I don't mind the, um, the everyday hustle and bustle, you yeah. know what I mean? I'm, I'm kind of used to that. Um, uh, but it is nice to go away for a bit and have that quiet, that quiet period, you know what I mean? So I don't mind switching yeah. things up, but, uh, yeah, overall city. Cause that's, that's how I grew up. Bro, I'm, 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 I'm different, bro. I love, I love the country. I love the outside, bro. I love that yeah. nature. You wake up just like, no noise, like nobody. That's what you want to do. You want to live, yeah. you want to live in the countryside? Yeah, yeah. like, like, no, let's na say, no neighbors. No, no neighbors. Let's say, like, I have six of my homies or I have, like, yeah. three guys. We're just chilling in the house. Just like, no, like, we just, we just sit down like this. We just sit yeah. down and just like, yo, we talk about shit. You can we can go to the city and shit, but it's gonna mm -hmm. be like a long drive. Other than that, just like I love that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? yeah. I experience it as well, right? So just bro, waking up in the backyard was just like lake and shit, just like quiet. I'm like, yo, this is it. Yeah, you know, that's I, when you realize that you like the countryside. Yeah, yeah. this is it. Yeah. But then again, it feels like uh, it's lonely. But it's lonely. I, I be in that stage where, like as you said, traveling, you're lonely. But those, those nothing. You know that like being alone, it's, it's not even. A big thing anymore mm -hmm. like i could be in this house with myself for like the rest of the year you know what i mean like mm -hmm. no problem what is your dream job we kind of like already know but what, what's like your dream job yeah dream job i would say being being a pro soccer player like you know mm -hmm. what i mean and being a consistent one you know what i mean like having having generational wealth yeah. and you know essentially being playing the sport i love yeah that's that's my dream my dream dream job yeah um but in i'm not exactly sure what i want to do now and you yeah. know what i mean i have i have pretty much a couple options yeah. but um, I want to be able to make a difference for people yeah. and I want to be able to help people help families and and uh, be that be that person that changed their life forever you know you live in an impact mm -hmm. yeah exactly living your mark leaving FDA. a huge impact and I feel like I feel as though I'm doing that now but I'm always looking to search for that higher ground as well too, yeah so. yeah I feel like you could be a motiv motivation speaker yeah, that's. I just feel like I've actually I've, I've done a I've done a couple I've, I've done a couple like seminars, um, not necessarily motivational speaking, but sometimes the seminars have such an impact that it ends up being, yeah. it ends up being motivational, right? It just naturally. You should have like vlog like somebody following you. You have the 
Pre presence yeah, yeah like bro like get somebody just follow me just film me like a date like gary v type of shit mm -hmm. just, you know what i'm saying like yeah, yeah. Type, like the journey they say like working with opsm that's just my perspective i think you should be good even the guy remember the guy at the opsm last month the white guy he just like always have something like crazy deep uh, oh yeah, Jason Teal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Jason Teal. That's cool, bro. Okay. Yeah. And I've, I've actually learned a lot from him. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, yeah. His messages are super strong, and and uh, we're always and we're always happy to hear from him. And yeah. you know, I mean, we we there's a reason why we bring him to these events yeah. because he has a he has an impact. Like for example, you you remember him? Hundred percent. Yeah, you know what I mean. And you'll always remember what the things that he says. You know. Yeah. So. How do you measure success? Based on your perspective. I measure success on how happy you are yeah i don't measure success financially you know yeah. i measure success with what what you've achieved and how happy it made you does that make does that make sense and yeah, yeah i yeah. see i see i understand that one mm -hmm. what is the most embarrassing thing you've ever done in your whole life like this is like brah like you sit down just like yo what did i do that oh god i would like i've, I've done a, i've done a few embarrassing <laughs> things to be honest uh <laughs> But uh, I guess the biggest one was yeah. like, like on like getting some, getting real deep. I got some real shit. Like yeah. when I was a kid, like I had I had a problem with stealing, and uh, you know what I mean. And, like and uh, one time, one time I, I stole from the the bay. I was like, this is when I was like like thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, yeah the yeah, bay, like yeah. the clothing store. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> and they were they were watching me the whole time on the camera. The, the bay the bay has apparently they have a. They have a whole back room security office. Like, oh, they, yeah, geez. they're mad serious there. Yeah, <laughs> I tried to steal this bench jacket, and and I thought it was so fresh, dude. Bench, like you know, you know, like it's preppy, preppy stuff. <laughs> I don't know why, and, uh, and you're young, but we all still. Uh, yeah, as soon as I walked out the door, I got I got tackled by this grown man. <laughs> yeah, How old were you? I was fourteen, fourteen Bruh. or fifteen, one of the two. That's crazy. Yeah, and, and, that and anyways, yeah, they, like, I, like I basically got detained and went to this back office, and it's yeah. uh, embarrassing. It's it embarrassing one to everyone saw me. It was, it was Boxing Day. Yeah. And two, embarrassing to to bring my my mom. You know what I mean? Ah, uh -huh, you have to bring somebody. Yeah, right? yeah, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a underage, right? So yeah. they, they had, so my mom had to pick me up, and you know, I'm basically like, like they really embarrassed me leaving the mall with the police in handcuffs with my mom beside me and people looking at me like, what's going Damn, on? Like, bro, yeah. this is in Ottawa, right? Yeah, yeah, this is in Ottawa. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> stupid, yeah. it's memories. Yeah. No, no, no. They say no risk, no story, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. You took the risk. Mm -hmm. so you find out. You fucked one. You find out. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the best age to get married for a guy? I would say in your thirties. Yeah, yeah, when you're when you're a little bit more established and you, you know what you want as a as a man and you know what you have as a man and yeah. and you've you've experienced your twenties and you know you've you've built a little bit of generational wealth and I think uh, yeah in your thirties anytime in your thirties uh, mm. it's okay to be in your forties too you know what I mean yeah. it's, it's normal um, but yeah I would say that for me preferably in my thirties yeah. What is uh some red flags in your relationship you always look after like you said this is not this is not mm. this is not for me i would say um i haven't been in a relationship with too many red flags to be yeah. honest with you but from what i've seen from others and this is not this is not pointing out anybody nobody you know generally <laughs> yeah, speaking but, global speaking yeah, yeah. seven billion eight billion people on the yeah. planet people overthink social media i think that's that's one red flag mm. and um i think also when women are too obsessed with themselves you know if you're a little if you like that kind of shows a little bit of narcissistic traits and stuff like that and i think that's a little bit of a red flag for me at least mm. i'm sure other people like that kind of stuff and yeah, yeah, yeah. whatnot but for me yeah that's not it especially yeah. when you see on social media mm -hmm. but then again social I, media but not on social media i don't take social media that seriously right you yeah. can you can do whatever you want on social media yeah. you know? it doesn't mean that does that doesn't actually portray who you are as a person yeah. you know what i mean i'd have to actually meet you in person and if you're self-centered and you're obsessed with yourself and you're always talking about yourself and you don't necessarily and you don't maybe you don't show people's respect because yeah. because they they aren't as as good as you or whatnot, yeah, yeah, yeah right? exactly that's true those are the those are the red flags yeah. that i look at and i'm like yeah you're 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 judgmental or you know you're it's, what what makes your shit so what's what makes your shit don't stink yeah exactly you know, you know yeah, what i mean like, exactly it's very easy to get caught up when you don't know you know but as soon as you know, just like, yo, yeah. bro, that's crazy. What you see from the outside is never yeah. what's going on yeah. on the inside. Yeah, because yeah. even yeah. Uh, I went to uh, 2017, I went on tour with uh, Wizkid was here, right? We mm -hmm. went together in shit, Montreal, Ottawa. 
he likes to like the fit you know you see the fame it's cool but yo once you get to meet the person like one on one because yeah, i yeah. hang out so much with him it's like bro the man don't even want to be like he just want to be with his mom bro mm -hmm, yeah that is crazy he's everybody a, he's a family with, man yeah with kid blah 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 but at the end of the day you want to show finish mm -hmm. go home like hey just mom chill. that's the best part of it. Yeah. like he feels like good when he's parents were there mm -hmm. and shit. His mom passed away like two years ago now. So. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Life, life. Okay. What job would you be doing if you ain't getting paid? Like, you're not getting paid, but you can't do this. What kind of job would you be doing? That's a good question. I would say <clears throat> helping someone out. Yes, like helping someone out on a collegiate standpoint, but not not necessarily through soccer. Mm, but, okay. But more or less like helping someone out directly on how they want to formulate their classes, okay. what's best for them, and, oh, okay. and essentially like how they grew up in high school. Like, what are your grades like? What, yeah, what have yeah. you? What, what? How did you do in high school that made you want to pursue uh, your undergrad? You know what I mean. Yeah. And what in your undergrad, like, do you like? You know what I mean. Or for example, what classes do you need to take, and what times according to what you're you're doing? Yeah. So, yeah. I would say I would say that um, that's one thing. But I want I also want to give back yeah. you know, to the community as well and. I think it's I think it's really really important to do that and I don't know in what kind of way I yeah. want to do it yet but just like a free yeah, game right yeah. oh okay yeah, I see, I, I see. at some point I want to give back and and do something special for not only just the community in general but a community you know mm. a struggling community for example like indigenous or yeah. you know what I mean and or people who live in low income housing and yeah. you know things like that right so I would I would say that I would want to provide um um youth youth groups yeah um for first for people who are like i said in indigenous programs or you're lower people that are in low income housing I mean, immigrants yeah. stuff like that and and then just 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 give them that advice that you know what i mean that i wish i had when i when i was younger yeah, that yeah, yeah my parents i wish that my parents had when they were younger when they yeah. were raising me you know what i mean so sure that's good man hey billboard for this guy man i don't know i have to talk to the mayor man i don't know if i'm gonna do it but i'll, I'll, I'll do it if you could change your name right now what would you change it to <laughs> like um, this is like yo i'll be like jordino whatever this what would you change it to uh that's a good question I, I actually don't know to be honest with you uh i never i never really thought about that um but i, I like i have I have names for my kids and stuff yeah um, but I was, oh, this yeah, guy is yeah, ready yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah, of yo. course, of course, that means for the kids. <laughs> yo, yeah. can't wait for that wedding. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. I would say, uh, let's see, Mason, maybe. Mason. Yeah, yeah. Mm, Mason Maloney. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, that's what it sounds clean. It sounds clean. <laughs> yeah. 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 It sounds clean. It sounds yeah. clean. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> okay, right now, if you could go travel one place in the world, where would you go? England to, to, watch, England? to watch a Chelsea game. Sorry, Ooh. London. London? London, yeah, to watch the Chelsea game, yeah. Have you ever watched the Chelsea game? No, I've never been. That's why that's on no my bucket way. list, man. I was so close last year, uh, yeah. but I, I, to be honest with you, like, if I'm gonna go, I, I want to go with another Chelsea fan. I would have went alone yeah. if I did. Yeah. But if I'm gonna experience that, I want someone. I want. So, I want someone to hug. You know what I mean? I want yeah, someone yeah, yeah. to like. like I want to dap you up when Chelsea scores. You, you like, can you, you know? can hug a random a random player. A random guy at the state. I could have messed. Oh, yeah, I, I could have messed. But, but I know what you're saying. You know what I mean. I, I want to go with like a mutual friend. You know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like to have that vibe. Like, yeah, like, like, yeah. To always remember that with them. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So one day I'll go. Do you like flying? Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah. You love it? No, I don't love it, but I don't mind it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm not like I'm not scared or anything. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah. You, you got used to it because you fly a lot. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest. Okay. How many countries have you visited before? Probably. Uh, Am I gonna run out of fingers? No. No, probably like eight, eight, eight countries. Yeah. So Canada, U.S., Finland. Yeah, Canada, U.S., Finland, uh, Sweden. Um, I was in Germany. Been England? Uh, no, I haven't been. I've like I've been to the airports in England, but I don't. I'd only count yeah. that. Netherlands, six. Um, Any Caribbean? Yeah, sorry, I was in Trinidad, <laughs> and uh, and and. Um, and Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah. So that's wow. eight. Yeah. What is your top uh, top three favorite cities in the world based on your experience? Top three favorite cities. Okay, so my number one city is Miami. Miami was. Uh, oh, you been in Miami? Yeah, I was actually in Miami recently. It was oh. actually for for an OPSM event. Um, so I was I was working that and yeah. and Miami was just a vibe. Crazy. Was, yeah, it was so fun. Um, there was a lot of aspects that I, that I thought were like a little like a little bit done like, grin, like grungy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm like ah oh, like that's that's kind of weird. Yeah. But Miami as a city, like if you go like especially like um, 
especially in uh, Ocean, South, Beach, South Beach and stuff Ocean like that. Dry. Yeah, yeah. It's so <laughs> sick. So <laughs> sick. I, I, that's, a, that's an everlasting memory for sure. Yeah. Um, second uh, would be um, New York. New York. Third, I mean, I'm living in it. Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. 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 Toronto. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, you like big cities. I can I'm see. A, yeah, I'm more a big city like guy. I, don't get me wrong. I like Vancouver and stuff like that, too. Yeah. Um, but, you know what I mean? Those those three, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which, in your opinion, which country uh, has the prettiest woman? Canada. Canada? They have yeah. the prettiest woman? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, this is this is actually crazy. Yeah. Bro, even the rappers say it. Even the rappers say it. Uh, Who? Uh, what did what did Quavo, Quavo say? What did Quavo say? I'm not uh, from Canada, but no, 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 that thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I remember I'm that. Not, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not from Canada, but something. Yeah, thing. I'm not from Canada, but but my things are or something like that. <laughs> yeah. one, of those, one of those lines, but yeah, your viewers will know it. Someone will know it. Yeah, here. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow, Canada. Mm, first person saying that. First person saying that. Yeah. Where is the sexiest language in the world? Well, you speak French, don't you? Our, our you understand French. Uh, I. You probably French. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. Okay. But uh, I played I played on a French team, so I, mm. I I learned a lot of French to that. But I I would say um, Spanish is, is yeah. the sexiest language in the world. Yeah. Everybody says Spanish. Yeah. Which language do you always want to learn? Like you want to learn this language? It's like so good. Like I want to learn this language. Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Me too, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah me too. Yeah. I bro, if you. If you hang out with me for like a day, I'll be, I swear, mostly in Spanish than English. Oh, yeah? Yeah, if I be, say I'm playing like video games, yeah, I'll be like, mad. yeah, yeah, I'll, it's all, it's just in the, in the yeah. brain, it's already programmed, it's just crazy, even in the game, like, yeah. like pickup games, whatever, I was just swearing like that. Yeah. Like, marica, like, it just comes naturally, why? High school, because we're just, I used to hang out a lot of Mexican, right? Oh, okay, So okay. we're just always swearing, because you have to know the bad words yeah, first, yeah. right? What is your biggest fear? I would say this. This is kind of deep. No. Um, I'm not sure if I'll say it right, but as a man, not being able to provide for your family, you know, and not being able to fulfill your responsibilities as a man, and um, and not having, not being able to to support. I think that's that's my biggest fear. Mm, mm -hmm. That's most likely like everybody. Yeah. Okay. What's what is your biggest regret? My biggest regrets. Yeah, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of regrets. I like that. Um, but to be honest, I would say that I would say that I, I could have done, th especially last year, yeah. um, going to Finland and stuff like that. I could have done things a little bit differently. Oh, okay. Um, but then again, too, it's like maybe I would have had a regret not going if I didn't if I decided not to go for whatever reason. Um, if I would have had a lot of regrets maybe not going so it's um it all depends on how your life works out you know yeah. what i mean and you know what i mean and I, I don't i don't think yes you can have regrets but there's a lot of things i wouldn't take back either yeah because you know I mean? those regrets can also sorry those uh those experiences can also be learning experiences as well yeah you know what i mean and and i wouldn't take those back for the world mm -hmm. that's, that's... it's it's hard to uh, yeah i don't live with many regrets though yeah i don't life is short bro. yeah life is my life is mad short man it's it's actually privilege having having that as i said having the journey to travel mm -hmm. and shit having mm -hmm. sleep in the airport it's a, it's a privilege man mm -hmm. um can money buy happiness no or you think that i think money can buy short-term happiness yeah yeah but uh i would say that i would say that in order to be fully happy you you have to limit those things like you mentioned regrets yeah. if you if you have the if you limit the amount of regrets that you have that's that's what can that that can make you happy and if you keep doing the things that you love you know that's that's what makes you happy um but i i don't think money can buy all of your happiness mm. for at least a long a long period of time you know that's that's if you, for example look, look at look at neymar for someone like neymar yeah. you know what i mean it's it's other other things that are putting him down it's not the money yeah. you know what i mean it's it's, it's other it's external things yeah, yeah, yeah you know that's your pressure right there's yeah. a lot of pressure mm -hmm. um what is your favorite quote of all time? This is like your favorite, yeah. your favorite saying. Become comfortable being uncomfortable. Favorite quote of all time. Wow. It's not, I'm not sure who it's been said by. Maybe, maybe I might coin it myself, you yeah. know, but. Uh, no, no, it's most, yeah, it's yeah. well known. Well, it's a well known quote, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's one yeah. of those ones. Um, yeah. Because if you're not, if you're not uncomfortable in a situation, mm -hmm. if you're not feeling Comfortable tested. in an uncomfortable yeah, situation. Exactly. This is this can mean a lot of things, right? Yeah. Like if you're not being tested and you're you're living life every day, the same thing, same thing. You're never going to grow as a person. No pressure. You yeah. know, no pressure. You know what I mean? And, um, it's once those challenges come, 
where you really start to think and really have to start to reevaluate whatever situation you're in or reevaluate yeah. your life in general yeah. um, is when is when you can really start to grow as a person and really find out more about yourself, right? And it's those it's those risks. It's like, for example, if you want to move to New York or something like that, and you know what I mean. And suddenly, you you feel as though that that this this if this is in your head, and you know what you how you want to do it, then do it. You know what I mean. Step outside your comfort zone. You know what I mean. Take that risk. Do it. And if it doesn't work out, okay. Well, you know that you did it. You know that you tried. You know. Yeah. You you you'll bounce back. I think it was yesterday when this one clip of Andrew Tate. He's like, yeah, you gotta be on. You gotta be comfortable in a comfortable position. Or oh, you wanna no no risk, no story because. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to work the, the 9 to 5, uh, 40 hours a week for the rest of your life until you're like 16 and retire? Okay, cool. That's comfort. Mm -hmm. But are you really happy? You know what I mean? Like You like the comfort, but you're not really growing. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. That was, that was a good one. Mm -hmm. um, you're the king of the world. You got everything. President of the world, 8 billion people in front of you. And you have to tell them a message, one message. What would you tell them oh, as a leader? That's a, that's a hard one. You've been in those yeah. situations with like 20, 30, 40 people, but yeah. now it's 8 billion. Yeah. <laughs> I would say treat your neighbor with respect. Treat your neighbor yeah. with respect? Yeah, that's what I can think of right now, to be honest with you. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because obviously you have all 8 billion people here in front of you yeah. that, that will listen to you. Yeah. Right? So if I can prevent, <laughs> if I can prevent war yeah. and I'm, I'm that guy that can, that can change everything, yeah, treat your neighbor with respect. You know what I mean? Treat, tr essentially that means treat everyone with respect. Yeah. You know, and, you know, promote peace. That's, you know, I think that's the, that's the, that, that's that would, be, that would be my main goal. You know what I mean? Promote peace. Yeah. Wow. Hey, man. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. And I wish you all the best. Keep Appreciate going. It. You just never give up, bro. Just keep going, man. Just keep going, yeah. Life is very short, man, because tomorrow is just another day. Uh, you have, uh, bro, I've known you for so long, bro. You have, you, you work hard, man. You put in a lot of work. Um, and yeah, you're going in the right path. I don't care if you make it or not, but yeah, you, mm. you, 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 you done your story, man. Yeah. Your story is, is been written, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah, you may be one, as I said, there may be a billboard somewhere there. Best motivator speaker, best OPSM, but something best is mm -hmm. going to happen, right? Your city, you, you take over, man. Exactly. You be the new Drake in sports. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows, man? Yeah. Anything. Anything new that you're trying to like, achieve right now? Like something, something like exciting? No, I'm just, like I said, I'm just trying to be comfortable. Like right now, like I would say that I'm back in Toronto for a reason, you know, just to, yeah. just to like build, build like my, uh, build my finances too, right? You yeah. know what I mean? And, you know, just build my, build my, uh, my own brand and stuff yeah. like that. And, and, uh, you know, just kind of find out more about me as a person, you know what yeah. I mean? And, you know, like I've had a lot of challenges this year, you know what I mean? So it's those challenges that I've had to overcome, yeah. you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, it's been difficult, you know what I mean? But I wouldn't change that for the world because that's, this is where I'm meant to be. You know? This is it. Yeah. This is you, the one else. Mm -hmm. There's never a copy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yo, appreciate you, bro. My guy.